Hi, I'm Akiva Martyr. And I'm Ariane Pinchot. And this is Shield News with your Week, Week at a, a Glance. Glance. The last Wednesday was a town hall meeting on the Barron campus. After President Joel made his opening remarks, many hands in the audience shot up, all asking about the same topic, housing. Several students at the meeting asked about the recent news that not only will the price of living in the 35th Street dormitory increase significantly, but those receiving more than $10,000 of need-based financial aid will not be allowed to live in that dormitory this coming year. President Scholl explained that the university gives $40 million a year in financial aid, and that while those who receive that student aid, quote, deserve every nickel of it, if they are prepared to pay $5,000 for a more ideal living space, then it becomes a problem. When asked her reactions to President Joel's response in the meeting as a whole, a Stern College junior told Shield News that, quote, It seems to me that whenever the school has a problem, they rely on housing prices, tuition, and other fees to bring in money. I think that it's wrong for the school to limit their services to those who don't receive financial aid. Not only that, I believe that their raising prices does not match the quality we are receiving in 35th. Rabbi Kenneth Brander, Vice President of University and Community Life, added at the meeting that Brookdale Residence Hall will only increase $300. He said that, quote, we wanted to be sensitive to people's financial needs. He explained that both campuses have at least one dorm that is reasonably priced. For those of you with further questions and concerns on the housing situation for this coming year, there will be a meeting Monday night and you go to comments at 7.30 p.m. The town hall meeting on the Wilf campus is next Wednesday in the Heights Lounge at 5.45. And lastly, we would be remiss if we did not mention the untimely loss of YC and Stern College professor Dr. Thomas Otway, who passed away last week. Dr. Otway, who worked at YU for 25 years, was the chair of the Mathematical Science Department. At the town hall meeting, President Joel said of Dr. Otway that, quote, he so much was a part of the Yeshiva University community. He was always focused on how he can add value. He cared tremendously about his students. His laws we felt across the university and his impact and contributions will be cherished and remembered for many years to come. And now over to Yoshua and guest anchor Denna Katz with events. Hi, I'm Yoshua Zerman. And I'm Denna Katz filling in for Abigail this week. There will be several events over the next few days in celebration of Israel Week, which begins this Monday. Wednesday night, don't miss one of the main events of Israel Week, a kumzitz led by Aryeh Tiffenbrunn. Similar to the amazing kumzitz in Times Square last year, also run by the Israel Club, this year's kumzitz is guaranteed to be an inspirational and uplifting night. The kumzitz will take place in First Hall Room 501 and will begin at 8.30 p.m. This week is the last blood drive of the semester. On the Barron campus, the blood drive will take place Monday and Tuesday in the 36th Street dorm lounge between 3 and 9 p.m. On the Wilf campus, the drive will take place Tuesday and Wednesday from 12 to 6 p.m. in Belfer Hall, Whitesburg Commons. Sign up by clicking on the link in the video description below. The Stern College Dramatic Society Spring Performance of All My Sons premieres this Tuesday night at 8 p.m. in the Norman Thomas Auditorium. Director of the production, our very own Professor Russell, told S.H.I.E.L.D. News that, quote, I didn't want the power of this play to be diminished by the fact that the male characters would be played by women. But once again, as was shown with Hamlet a few years back, their command of and commitment to the material is extraordinary. It's a production I'm very proud of. If you can't make it on opening night, don't worry, there's an encore performance on Wednesday night, also at 8 p.m. Doors open at 7.30. To purchase tickets or to learn more about this performance, check out their Facebook page located in the video description below. The YCDS production of I'll Be Right Here, a modern political tragedy, continues this week as well. If you haven't yet seen the play, you have four more opportunities to do so. Performances will take place Monday to Thursday at 9 p.m. To purchase tickets and to learn more about the play, check out their Facebook page located in the video description below. Stern College's first ever silent disco party is this Tuesday night. Get ready for a night filled with awesome dancing. The party begins at 8 p.m. in Koch Auditorium, and sorry boys, it's women only. These are only some of the many events taking place on campus this week. To hear about more, make sure to head to yu.edu slash events. And now, over to Binyamin with sports. Hi, I'm Binyamin Zerman here with the Shield News Weekly Max Live Sports segment. What can you serve but never eat? A volleyball. The Yeshiva University's men's volleyball team earned a Skyline Conference win over Sarah Lawrence College in straight sets in their last home game of the season. Their scores were 25-15, 25-16, and 25-19. Colia Miller, Jorge Daba, and Jonathan Goldstein were honored at the ceremony on senior night. I heard some of the seniors might join the armed forces for the chance to gain some experience in the service. The team's season came to an end when they fell at a Skyline doubleheader to Old Westbury and the College of Mount St. Vincent in straight sets. The Maccabees finished their season with a record of 5-19 and 4-12 and in the Skyline Conference. It has been confirmed that fish aren't very good at volleyball because they are afraid of the net. What goes all around the softball field but never moves? The fence. 
The women's softball team dominated one of their doubleheaders last week when they took on the College of New Rochelle on Tuesday and won both games. They won the first game 11-2 and the second game was a shutout with a score of 12-0. One of the team's secrets to success is putting frogs in the outfield because they never miss a fly. The team had another busy week this week with three doubleheaders. They play Wednesday at Rutgers Newark with their first game at 6 p.m. They then play on Friday versus College of Mount St. Vincent with the first game at 12.45 p.m. And lastly, they play on Sunday at St. Joseph's College, Long Island, and the first game starts at 12.30 p.m. Good luck, ladies. That's it for me here. For more Maccabee scores and updates, be sure to check out whyumax.com. Let's go, Max. Well, it's that time of the week again, and frankly, we were overwhelmed by the number of questions you received. But we narrowed it down to Sims Jr. Akiva Koppel, who wants to know who our celebrity doppelgangers are. That's a really tough question, Akiva, because I really always considered ourselves celebrities. Hmm. Well, if we did have to answer it, though, I would say that you remind me kind of of a Taylor Swift type character. That's, yeah. That's so nice. I think that you always remind me of Melman, the giraffe from Madagascar. Oh. Well, that's it for this edition of A Week at a Glance. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. I'm Akiva Martyr. And I'm Ariane Pinchon. And you're watching Shield, Shield News. News.